the three essential audio techniques that you should know to help you take your visual storytelling to the next level. What's up everybody, my name is Camilo for the UK21 Media, coming through with another video. You've caught me in a setup where I'm filming a video for our website, so that's why I've over produce this one. So I make videos about filmmaking and how to improve your visual storytelling. So if that's something that you're into, consider subscribing. So you all know that audio is a significant aspect of filmmaking and sometimes way more important than the actual video quality itself. And the following three techniques will help you use audio as another layer to help you tell your story. Today we're using Premiere Pro, but this can be used on any software as the principles are exactly the same. So number one is the low pass filter or the muffled effect. Now this sound has many more uses than making it sound like you're underwater. The thinking behind this is that the effect basically only allows the lower frequencies of each sound to be heard. Here's a couple examples of using this effect. Never wakes up. So as you can see, it sounds like the alarm is in another room because I isolated only the low frequency of that sound. So to do this effect in Premiere Pro, you simply search low pass and you drag this into your audio and then you tweak your dial so that you only really hear the low frequency sounds. I cut mine down to 600 and I found that that was fine for me. Now you could use the parametric equalizer and from here you just select a preset, generic low pass and then you adjust this depending on how it sounds, but I'm very lazy, so I just use the low pass effect already in Premiere Pro. Uh, but with this, you can very easily visualize the frequencies. You can see here, this is zero hertz all the way up to around 20,000 hertz. You really only wanna hear the low frequencies of this sound, hence the low pass. Another way to try this is to make it seem like somebody is in deep thought. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I find that this makes it seem like you're really in someone's head whilst they're kind of daydreaming, you know, not really focused and just thinking about something. So here we're doing the same thing as before, but this time with our soundtrack. And we're actually using keyframes with our low pass filter. It starts off over 21,000 Hertz and then it goes down to around 212 Hertz. And that's kind of grabbing the bassy sounds of the soundtrack. So much power with just one type of effect, which is sick. On to our next technique. And this is literally the inverse, the high pass slash telephone effect. So this technique is commonly used for telephone calls, such as this one. Hi, yeah, it's me again. Listen, it's been 234 days since we sent that invoice. Just wanted to know if um, you had an update on the payment. I mean, I think our relationship was really good and I know you had a really good time. So I just mm -hmm. wanted to know if you wanted to keep that. And also perhaps pay me for the work that we did. Because, you know, that's what good relationships do. Hello? Basically in the effect, we only allow the high frequencies of the sound to be heard. So yeah, it just kind of adds another layer of depth to your video because you're kind of feeling how that person receiving the call is, is feeling because of what they're hearing. So the high pass is the same thing, except we're actually just searching high pass and dragging it into our audio clip. When you move it all the way to the lowest frequency, you basically hear the sound like normal. When you move it to the highest frequency, you only hear the high frequencies. And because this guy was putting the phone far away from him, I wanted the effect to be stronger when the phone is hanging up on the wardrobe. So what I did is I start at 984, and then as he's moving it away, I just increase it a little bit more to 1200. So this is used less to deliver an emotion, but more as a tool to kind of immerse your viewers a little bit more into the environment that your actors are in. Okay, so the third and last effect slash technique that we will learn today is about the multiband compressor. Now I can make a whole video about this tool because it has so many uses. So what a compressor pretty much does is it brings all the low sounds a bit higher and the high sounds a bit lower so everything's a bit more balanced. Sometimes in interviews you speak very excited and you say things very loudly and then other times a bit more relaxed just agreeing on everything so the sound is a bit lower. Check out how I fixed the audio in this clip here where the camera was actually about two meters away and I was using the inbuilt microphone on my Sony a7 III. Never wakes up. Never wakes up. 
So as you can see, we added the multiband compressor and you can see it shows different waves for different frequencies with the blue being the lower end. What happens is if we see the original sound waves, we have very little on the bass and very little in the mids. So we don't actually hear the voice that much, but afterwards we start hearing a bit more in the bass and a bit more in the, in the mids. So we start by adding the raise vocals preset. And then what we want to do is we want to tackle the low end and then the mid end as well. So move this line here a little bit to the left to around 100 hertz because that's usually where the low end of people's voices lies. And then I increase the gain up to eight. And if we play that back, it never wakes up. You start to hear the sound a little bit more fuller. And we want to raise the mids as well to eight. This is something that you have to play with, but for my voice in this case, this is what I found to work. If we compare before, never wakes up. To after, never wakes up. You can see that the sound is a bit more full. One caveat about using the multiband compressor is you do actually develop some noise in your audio because you're bringing up all the levels of things that are humming or the kind of atmosphere that you're kind of picking up. So now what we want to use, we're going to add the denoise effect, which I've already added here. And when we edit it, we choose focus on all frequencies because I found that the high frequencies and low frequencies had a lot of noise in them because of the stuff that was in my room, like my computer and the outside as well. And now if we listen to it before, the noise reduction. Never wakes up. And then after. Never wakes up you see that we actually get rid of a lot of the noise. Now you are limited to how much you can get rid of it, but that's pretty good for now. But yeah, those are three essential audio techniques that you should know as a filmmaker. There are hundreds of types of audio techniques and if people like this video, I might actually do some more because I know some cheeky little other ones that can help you with your visual storytelling. Just before I leave and very related to this video, I just wanna say that I released a free YouTuber sound pack that basically has all these sound effects that you might wanna use in videos. I know some people that are watching these videos are actually creators themselves. So you have 23, I believe, types of sound effects. So have a go, let me know if they're good. And if they're good, perhaps leave a review. But if that brought you some value, make sure you leave it a like. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. And if you wanna see more videos like these, consider subscribing so you get notified when I make a new video and not leave it up to chance for YouTube to find you and send you my content.